This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Um, good morning to everyone. I'm glad you're here. And today we are talking about endless hoop and patchwork quilting in the hoop. And I know that we have um, touched on endless designs um, before, but we're going to look at them again today and we're going to look at an endless hoop and other ways to use endless designs and the endless design which is featured in the lesson part of our handout um, is also used in the project for today's lesson. And before we get started, um, you might have noticed that everything on the lesson part is marked page of six. So you might want to renumber your pages so they have the right page numbers instead of all of them being six of six. <laughs> but, um, okay, so. That ha seems to happen on occasion that uh, page numbers aren't quite correct. And what I have on my screen right now is the Sonet blog. And I thought it was very interesting that they are saying we, are, we currently have more than 8,000 designs in the MySonet library. And um, this article, says that they have um <clears throat> they they are featuring um some new rose designs and this one that you see down here on the bottom of my screen is a free design that you can download by touching on that number above the design so if you would like that rose design which is very pretty um and it is an applique you might want to go to the blog and download it. Okay. All right. Talking about endless um, designs, I'm going to close the blog here. And we can get to our endless designs by going to um, specialty hoop embroidery techniques from the <clears throat> joy of sewing screen and the third one over is endless hoop embroidery and when we do that it wants me to calibrate my hoop which i am doing and then it will show us the designs that are available well i shouldn't have done that um there and if you do like I just did, if you touch the open book, then it goes back to um, the designs that are specific to that technique. And the one we're looking at is number nine. Come on, you can do it. Okay. So it brings up this little flower design, and I don't know how well you can see it because it's fairly light. It's a light blue. Um, tell you what, let me go in and change that color. Let's change it to a red. Now it should show up better on my screen for you. And if I unselect it, you can see the things that are unique to endless designs. These little angle, uh, right angle marks or left corner marks, let's call them corner mark marks, which they label as alignment marks. There's one at the top and one at the bottom. And they, to use this as an endless design, though you can use those marks which stitch out to line the next repeat of this design up so with the previous one so that it just is right in line and looks 
continuous, like right here where the stem touches the top of the flower, where you've got the stem down here, which is open. And when you line up, if you've embroidered this out and then line up the alignment marks, the, the second design, you line the alignment mark at the top with the bottom alignment mark from the first repeat. And that should make your um, design appear continuous. Even though my alignment marks will line up when I'm doing an endless design, I like to go into precise positioning and just cross check to make sure that it really does line up like I want it to. So it's always a good thing to do that. Um, they, well, we, yes. Before you go on. Yes, ma'am. You going to, or somebody gonna explain why we got the uh, exclamation point by our settings? Um, it did it change some temporary things? I didn't couldn't see what it did. What's it? I was just looking at that too. I was wondering what that was all about. Looks like we all have that, huh? Yeah, yeah and I didn't even didn't even notice it. Um, the following features have been adjusted. Select hoop. Right up. This is what it says right up here. Oh, maybe it's the selected hoop has been adjusted. That's what it's saying. Um, okay. so, so if I selected, it went from whatever my it was. Okay. I don't know what. All three of us. I don't know if other people have it, but mine's doing the same thing. I have, yeah, and I have, what hoops do you have selected on your machines? Mary? Well, it ended, mine ends up saying it's got the, uh, I don't remember what my default was. Maybe I'll go back and try it to say, hey, it switched me from whatever my default hoop was to the endless. Because it's now sitting in an endless hoop on my machine. And that's, what my, that's what mine is sitting in. And if I change it, I'm going to change mine to the metal hoop. And then my my exclamation point disappears. But if I and I went back to the endless hoop and the exclamation point did not come back. Interesting. Thank you for explaining. <laughs> I don't know that that explains anything, but um, no, it does. If we change the hoops, then it goes away. But when you change it back. It, it doesn't come back. So I don't know exactly what that was all about. So um, the other thing, let me select this and delete it. And if I select a different endless design, let me select that one just for, when I selected the endless design again, it put that exclamation point back. So maybe it's just trying to get my attention to say, hey, this is not, you know, a quote, regular hoop or a design for a regular hoop. It's a specialty hoop. Well, for that, I was going to say, I deleted everything and I set my hoop to be 60 by 200. And then I went through and selected, you know, like we did, I went through the, the advisor and selected the endless design and uh -huh. it popped up and changed my hoop. Right. So I think it's warning you that you changed your hoop on you. So if you go back and like you did and select the hoop you want to use, it says, okay, you're yeah. doing your thing. Yeah. But if I, I change, okay, I change my hoop to metal, the 180 by 130 metal, and right. I delete it, but then I go back to the designs and I pick some some endless design and load it, 
then it does, it changes it to the endless hoop and then pops up my exclamation point. Right, just to warn you, don't go straight. If you're thinking you're using, like in your case, the metal hoop. Right. When you go into embroidery, it's it's going to ask for the endless because it switched it unless you reset it. Okay, yeah. that's, that's smart. That's good to know that it's switching it. And if you're not paying attention, which oftentimes I don't. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I figure it it should take what I told it. That it's going to, that it's, you're not going to have the. Right. So th that's, that's really interesting because, and I'm going to go back to the design that I wanted in the first place. Um, that number nine, because that's the one that's used in our class today. And let me change again, change the color so we can see it on the screen. Okay. Judy, was that the old endless hoop? Because the one that I have now is 260 by 150. There are two endless hoops. Okay. There's the small I one and the large one. Okay, I have the 180 by 130 metal, but I think I loaned somebody my small endless. Okay, this is this is the small yeah. endless hoop. Okay, and it's like it says 180 by 100. And I was gonna okay. put it on, use it on the machine, but for some reason my machine okay. won't recognize it. So. And it's not, I don't have one of these. Well, I think I that's borrow. what happened to me on my Epic to, before. Pardon, Leslie? That, I think that's what happened to me before too. It won't recognize that hoop on my Epic. So um, I don't know why, but it won't. Well, there's some funky little levers and sensors in the embroidery unit that it uses to it uses the configuration of this connector to, yeah. to determine what so, what hoop you have the, and each one is different like if i compare it to and i don't okay. know if, you can, if i compare it to my metal hoop okay. the metal hoop connector is much longer so there's mm -hmm. something that's not quite right okay and honestly, I'm not going to worry about it because if I'm going to do something endless, I really like using the metal hoop rather than this hoop. But oh, good. Okay. This hoop is available, okay. and um, we'll talk about it a little bit more. Um, but the endless hoop is it was made long before we had metal hoops. And the, the theory right. behind it is that it's all together in, quote, one piece. And you can just use it to um, mainly do like borders or something or a long strip. And if you put the edge of your fabric right up against this ledge here and do clamp it down then with this there's a lever here that opens and closes this and you would put your if if you're doing just plain fabric then you're going to have stabilizer behind it if you're doing like a, a border on a completed quilt then you don't need the stabilizer behind it because you're quilt your batting and your two layers of fabric are stable enough to just do your embroidery on but it by having it so that you put your fabric right against this ledge every time it positions your embroideries for you and this the fact that i have two of them in here right now is from the uh, instructions that are with our project today but the once you've embroidered out a set of of the designs, then you can just open up the hoop and 
slide your fabric either up or down to the next place and just continue with your embroidery. So that's the theory behind the end, endless hoops. Your hoop looks a lot different than mine. I mean, the mechanism is the same, but see, mine is all flat. It doesn't have all the, those... Um, Protrusions? <laughs> well, the protrusions, the, the um, around the, the thing that clamps down, mine is all flat. Oh, on the top here, instead of being... Right. Are you? Do you have the big one or the little one? I have both. Here's the little one. Okay. What What brand is yours? It's a Foss. This one is a Viking. Huh. So that and normally they've always been. Maybe that was a hundred years ago. <laughs> well, at least ninety nine, probably. Okay. All yeah. Right. So. Yeah, that I don't know why. Yeah, because um, normally they're exactly the same. It doesn't matter the brand, I thought. Yeah, pretty much. And I was, you know, I have, I at one time I had one of these, but I no longer have it. And um, I didn't remember, you know, how it looked or so forth. I knew how it worked. And, but I never was, um, I never used it very much. So when they came out with the metal hoops, I was thrilled to have those instead of this. Yeah. So, okay. So if you've not used um, for a continuous design and don't have the um, endless hoop, the um. I really suggest that you use the met the metal hoops because to me they are very versatile and if you were doing something an endless design that wasn't at the edge of your fabric then the certainly the metal hoop is going to be much better for you than the endless hoop but if you're doing it out on the edge of the fabric, then that's great. All right. So any other questions about that? I know there's bunches of endless hoops, hoop designs. Well, we've got quite a few in our machine. There's 25 of them built into the epics. And I'm sure there are way, way more of them on the MySonet library. All right. So if there aren't any any questions about endless hoops, uh, let's talk about patchwork in the hoop. And I don't, you know, if you go to some of the classes, especially like the Kimberbell classes and so forth, you've encountered um, this kind of a design. And if we go back to our <clears throat> Joy of Sewing screen and we go to, um, I'm going to, oh, in the techniques on uh, embroidery, there's a quilting and patchwork embroidery category. And patchwork in the hoop is one of the categories but there are only two designs built into the machine that are the patchwork in the hoop and i tried to look on the mysonet library this morning and i could only find um some crazy patch designs for not not similar to the ones that uh, we have here. So if I if I type in, well, I can't type. Crazy patch and do a search on it. It comes up with quite a few designs, but only the first twelve designs 
are actually um, crazy patch designs. And I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Trying to get it big so you can see it better. Those first 12 are crazy patch design, but the search engine on the MySonet brought up a lot of things that are patches because I had patch in my search uh, terminology. I did notice that if you're doing it on the computer that there's a, um, you can refine your searches with some filters and they have categories over on the left hand side now, which can um, eliminate a lot of the stuff that you really don't want. If you click on um, patchwork quilting, I believe it just brings up those 12 crazy patch designs on the computer because it, it doesn't have the word, it doesn't pull up the things that are actual patches. So the doing it on the computer, you get a few less designs than you get on the sewing machine. All right. So <clears throat> what we really want to look at today is the patchwork in the hoop. And if you look in your sampler book, you can see these two designs and see the directions for stitching them out. It'll say, like, after color one, it says add piece number one. And if you turn the page, and I probably am turning it the wrong way, open, go backwards. There are, you will see for design E16, you see a page that has um, templates for the pieces of your quilt block. And then the next page is design E17. And in our handout, there was a what I thought was a really good suggestion. They said, uh, bring up the manual on your computer, which means go to the website, like the Viking website, and click on the Epic machine, and then scroll down to where it says Embroidery Sampler Book, and you can forward go forward to that same page that I just showed you that had the template on it. And you can actually print out that page and then you cut that up and use it as your templates to cut the pieces for your quilt blocks. And the, the thing you need to remember is that when you print it out, you must click and you bring up your print options box on your computer, you must check whatever makes your printer printed out at actual size because this one that I have right here now is actual size. This one, I didn't click actual size and you can see that the actual size one is a bit larger than the one that I didn't click actual size on okay so if you're going to do, print out your templates for cutting your fabric pieces for your quilt box for the designs that are built into the machine please check that little actual size box so you get your templates the right size all right and you'll notice on the template there are little thing there's a little marker the, on this one, it says has two, and on three, it, ha it has a marker, which is kind of like in the center of the template. And those markers, when you, the first step on the stitching out the quilt block, and I'll stitch one out so you can see it, is that, well, let me just select this one. All right, go away go away. The first step stitches out 
all of the numbers and it stitches out those little markers that you can use to line up your pieces of fabric if you mark them on your fabric when you cut them out. So when I cut this out, come on, I need to um, I need to mark on there where that little mark is, and then I can match it up with the mark on my um, as I embroider this out. Okay, because I I did stitch out one last night. And forgive me for the mess of colors, but this is this is that E16 block stitched out. And there are, you can see there are generous um, seam allowances for that. And if you trim it up, um, as they tell us in the handout, it becomes a six inch block. And I've I was laying my ruler on it last night and discovered that th this particular ruler has a nice 45 mark that I could line right up with those where those pieces of the block mat meet up and then I could be assured that my block was nice and square when I trimmed it up to the six inches because it it comes out just a little bit bigger than six inches. Okay, so let's load that puppy up. And I have, I'm gonna switch my thread because I have a light colored thread in there. And it, you won't be able to see what it stitches out. So I'm gonna put something a little darker in there so you can see exactly what it stitches out. And if you have some stabilizer or muslin hoop in your, uh, like a 150 or a little bit bigger hoop, and you want to stitch along with me, you can, you are welcome to do that. Or if you just want to watch, that's up to you. So, I'm going to go ahead and start this and we'll see what happens. Okay. So, and on my sample block, I did use muslin instead of stabilizer. For this one now, I just have stabilizer in the hoop. So you can. You can use water soluble stabilizer and then you don't have to take it out because when you wash your quilt, it will wash away. If you have tear away stabilizer like this, then you will want to remove that before you assemble your quilt. Or if you use muslin, you can just leave it in there and it'll just be a little light layer of fabric. So looking at my screen now, this is what it's going to stitch out. It's going to stitch out the perimeter of the block, and then it's going to stitch out all of the little division lines where the pieces go, plus those little marks with the numbers on them for lining up the pieces. Okay, so that's our first color that we're going to be stitching out. Camera's being naughty again. Okay, so Thank you. 
Okay, so now it's stitched out the first color, and it did put my little marks in there, and it put it stitched out the numbers also. So now it, it is showing me that I have, it, the next stitching line is going to be for piece number one up at the top. So I'm going to take my piece number one and place it on my, hoop and line it up so that um, the I'm covering up those stitching lines for number one. I'm never quite sure. Okay, it's going to stitch. It's going to stitch up right at the corners. So this this line that is stitched for the number one should should be my where I'm putting the edge of my fabric. Okay. I don't have to overlap this line. This is my my line up line, if you will. Um but thank you, camera. Um I don't want to cover it up. I just want to use it to line up the edges of the fabric piece that I've cut from my template, okay? So when I stitch that color, Okay, so that's that's my seam allowance for number one. So now it's going to um, stitch down color number two. And I have my number two piece here and I've made a mark on my fabric where the mark was on my template. So I'm gonna put this um, my little mark for number two is right here. And I'm going to line up the mark I made on my fabric with that. I'm going to line up the raw edges of my pieces. And then stitch that piece down. Okay, so then I don't you dare. I'm going to open this up and finger press this down. And then the next thing it's going to do is to top stitch right along that seam that I just sewed. And it, I suppose if you really didn't want the top stitching on there, you could skip this step and go on to the next color after you had folded your fabric piece down and finger pressed it. Okay, so now I'm ready for piece number three. And I have marked my fabric piece with the uh, little mark that was on my template and the mark is here on my stabilizer so I will line up my pieces with that mark and the edges of my previous piece and that will now stitch piece number three down. Okay. 
And again, you want to fold it down and finger press it. So now the only thing left is this big corner piece, number four. And again, it has a mark, and there's a mark, a stitched mark right on my stabilizer here that I can line up <clears throat> with the mark on my fabric right there. See my mark and the mark on my stabilizer and match up my raw edges. Oops, not yet. Sorry, I jumped ahead. I didn't do the top stitch on piece number three. So sorry, I was getting ahead of myself. Like I said earlier, if you don't want that top stitch, you certainly could skip that color. So now we'll do piece number four. And line it up. Okay, one more fold and finger press and top stitch. And it almost looks like it's not going to get that top stitch right on the edge, but it does. Once it has put all of the pieces in place, it's going to come back and stitch around the whole block with just a, a straight stitch to show you the outside dimensions of your block. Okay, so we got one more step to go here. Okay, so now our, our quilt block is finished. We can take it out of the hoop, take the stabilizer off and trim it up to six inches. And that's, that's an easy way to make a quilt block and to make them all come out exactly the same. Uh, I, did, I chose that one because it had a, a few less pieces than the other one that's built into the machine. Um, this, let me first off delete that. When I load this, the other one is a log cabin block and it has quite a few more pieces. But if you go to the website and print your template, that'll make it a whole lot easier to cut your pieces than trying to um, actually there's 11 pieces to it and uh, so 
and you might have to print your template twice because piece 11 overlaps four and seven on the page and i'm sure they did that just so they could get it all on one page so if you're going to use this template and print it out i'd print two copies so you <laughs> you have those three templates that you can cut out all right So, did anybody make a quilt block with me? I no? didn't. I didn't today, but I made one of those blocks on a project I did in Nadine's class. Uh huh. And we we ended up then putting embroidery and stuff on, on it before we check it out so yeah it's a, yeah that's a great idea i mean you could you know inside each one of these little pieces you know you could put some embroidery and dress it up a little hi lee and carol foss i hadn't seen you before so hi <laughs> um so any questions about that Okay, so um, let's look at the project, the instructions for the project that are in our handout today. And the project does use both of the um, quilt blocks that are built into the machine. And it, um, it's titled mini quilt. And it really is mini because it ends up about 30 inches square so it's not a very big quilt but you could because it's all the same size blocks and the method that she uses for the sashing between the blocks it you could make that quilt any size that you wanted and it doesn't show up real well on my printouts but the darker block or strips in the sashing on the blocks that is embroidered and that it uses um the method first first off she she made all her blocks using the built-in designs then she used that endless design that we talked about earlier this one and what that she did was she took eight inch strips of fabric, which this piece of paper is eight inches wide. And she put the design into the hoop twice. So it would stitch one side and then the other, and then she would move it up and continue stitching it because she stripped, stitched it on strips of fabric that were cut eight inches wide and the width of the fabric. So she would stitch that whole 40 some inches of fabric with two rows of designs. And then she came back and she cut, when she took a, her embroidered eight inch strip out of the um, hoop, she took a ruler and measured on each side of the embroidered design she and a half of an inch beyond the design on either side and that gave her a strip that was one and seven eighths inches wide and then she cut those strips into um six inch well no she before she cut them she cut them to one and seven eighths and then she um cut um i mean she cut another fabric and put it on either side of that embroidered strip and cut cornerstones and use those three piece strips and the cornerstones 
to make the sashing for her quilt. So because she embroidered on these dark strips, they don't show up very well on the pictures in the handout. But if, uh, if she had used like a light, well, I think she did use like a pink thread, but it just doesn't show up well in the photographs for the handout. But it's, it's a clever way to be able to use the um, endless hoop by using a wider piece of fabric and then cutting it down into the size strips that you need. Judy, yeah. When, when you do that technique, you pretty much, I mean, how do I want to say this? You end up having to really use your precise positioning to make sure that you got got it lined up with both designs, right? Because right. Otherwise, you'd have to be modifying it with each time it stitched the left and then it stitched the right. Yes. Okay. And you may, you know, there's, as you're stitching it out and you have two designs like this, and you, when it goes to stitch the first one and you make sure it's lined up perfectly and then it jumps over to stitch the second one and it, it doesn't look like it's lined up exactly and you'd like to change it there's you can go back into precise positioning and adjust the position of your design so it does line up correctly so you don't have a problem judy's got her friend <laughs> so you know there's nothing nothing to say that you can't you know, stitch out the one side and, and then go back into precise positioning to make sure that the second side is lined up like you need it to be. Okay. So there is, um, let's see, I wrote something in here. Oh, on page, on the project handout on page three, um, under the category of let's sew, it the item number three it says stitch the one and seven eighths wide strips to each side of the embroidered strip well the embroidered strip is one and seven eighths but the pieces you're going to stitch on the sides of it are one and a half and that's the one that she on when in her cutting instruction she says from the outer border fabric eight strips one and a half inches wide by the width of the fabric. So that's the one and a half inches wide fabric that you would be the the two that you sew on either side of your embroidered strip. Okay. So you might want to pencil that in that you really are using the one and a half inch strips and sewing them to the one and seven eighths inch strip. Does that make sense? Okay. I think um, when she arranged her blocks, she turned them all the same way, but I think it might, you know, if you were making this quilt and using these blocks, you might want to arrange them a little differently instead of having them all exactly the same orientation. And I think this this would make a great scrappy quilt because you've got some fairly small pieces in there, and you could use a use up a lot of um, things left over from other projects, and make a, a scrappy, a cute scrappy quilt, and certainly make it a little larger than the small size that is in our direction here. And it would be easy to, um, like Mary said, to add some embroidery in the, the various sections of the quilt, that to add a little interest to it if you had some plain fabrics that you were using, like this, this big orange thing is kind of boring. So if you had some embroideries in here, or even you could use some decorative stitches 
and to in instead of the um just triple top stitch here or you could run a decorative stitch right alongside of it and that would look good just to add a little more interest to it so and do you have it you have any other suggestions on how to use these um, built-in quilt blocks in your machine What we did is her project was a, a um, oh, a thing that you put under your sewing machine and hangs down. So uh -huh. that that quilt block was a pocket. Oh, that was good. Yeah, was that was that was clever. Mm hmm. It is. I think they can just be put in between like if you were doing some sort of a quilt and it's got applique these could be your more you know simple piece blocks that don't have quite as much busyness to them that's true that's a good idea leslie you could also bake them and turn them into pot holders right oh absolutely or, <laughs> yeah. or something like that depending on what you put underneath it Right, you could just put some, um, can't even come up with the name of it now, Insel Bright in between, uh, you yeah. know, underneath it and make a pot holder. You could yeah. make, you know, put several together and make a table runner, a placemat, use them for, you know, all sorts of things. And if you're doing like, I think just using you can make all yeah. kinds of, for all your different holidays, you know, Halloween fabric or Christmas yeah. fabric or whatever. Right. Yeah, and just use up your scraps. I've been trying to do that lately and just use up scraps, kind of doing a string quilt, they call it, which is kind of like this, but you're just doing strips. But I would put these in with it. I think this would look fine with it. Uh, that would give it a little scrap. more interest. I think. Yeah, I agree. So, and you have you have the blocks already built in. You have a way to print templates so that you're you're not cutting pieces too short or too too big. And um, <clears throat> I don't know if Carol and Lee were on here when I talked about uh, printing a template for your. Um, quilt blocks like this that you know there's a page in your were you on when I talked about that Lee no okay or Carol because there's a page in your sampler book that shows that template but you know if you wanted to actually use it you, you probably would somehow trace this and then cut your template pieces out. But instead of going through that rigmarole, if you go to the Viking website and select the machine that you're using, your Epic or your Epic 2, and scroll down to where close to the bottom of that section on the machine, they will have uh, resources, I believe they call it, and one of them is the sampler book. And you can open that up as a PDF and then forward to the page that this template is on and just print that page. The thing that you have to remember is that you have to print it, you have to click the box on your print options so it prints out at actual size because I printed one and did not do that. And instead of my template coming out the right size, which is this front one, it came out about half an inch short for that number one template. So it's very critical that you click that box that says actual size when you print it out. Okay. 
So that's that's an easy way to get a, an accurate copy of the template, which is what I did. I used an actual actual size copy when I did cut the pieces for this block that I stitched out, and it worked perfect. So I thought that was an excellent suggestion in our handout. Judy? Yes. Can this be, um, I'm looking at your, your hoop. Could this be worked up like you have and then without adding the borders, take, take it out and create um, a quilt as you go. That's the only way I know how to quilt is quilt as you go. And um, then put the sashings in and then put the borders in later. Yeah, I don't, uh, you mean add the sashings at when it's in a hoop rather? No, than, no, no, just after just, just oh, create okay. I, the all right. and nothing I, else. Yeah. Yes, I'm sure you could do that. Okay. Um, you're talking about when you're, you're laying, you're backing out, putting your batting on it and then laying one block at a time or one piece of sashing right. at a time on and and doing it that way yes why not i mean um, you just because it's a, a piece block um for your quilt as you go you could just treat it the same way you would as if it was just a plain piece of fabric once it's all pieced together then it makes no difference whether you have just a solid piece of fabric that you're using for your quilt as you go design or whether you're using a piece block. Does okay. that make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Okay, well, maybe someday I'll see a whole bunch of quilts made, scrappy quilts or extra little blocks put in pieces or pot holders or table mats who knows what tote bag you could put a whole bunch of them together and make a tote bag oh springs eternal i'm sorry hope springs eternal <laughs> yep hope springs eternal good thing pandora shut that box <laughs> <laughs> well thank you judy this was uh always good always gives me ideas from what other people are saying and you're saying and so thank you so thank thank you're welcome and thank you for being here i thought you know some of their ideas were were very good and i'm sorry my machine was cranky and won't recognize that endless hoop but i there's ways around it we've got plenty of different kinds of hoops that'll work and we can go from there. So thank you all for being here. Thank, thank you. you, Judy. It was great. And um, thank you. Have a good thank day. You. Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody.